pleasure to be here with you and hear a great talk. <coughs> organizing this uh, very nice uh, workshop. Um, so uh, Dennis and Alex gave uh, great talks and a perfect uh, introduction to my talk. Um, so briefly go through the introduction. So 20 years ago, uh, the Human Genome uh, Project was completed and we had uh, we had the human sequence and just uh, recently, like uh, March 22, there was a publication about the telomere to telomere uh, project where uh, they completed um, or filling the gaps of uh, uh, sequencing the human genome. So there was about 8% of the human genomes that was, uh, couldn't be uh, sequenced with the current technology or with the short uh, short reads and then uh, with the advanced sequences technology such as Nanopore and PacBio, um, which is uh, based more on long reads, the, there was the uh, ability to sequence um, these gaps which uh, contain a lot of repeats and uh, such as a centromere and telomere and duplicated uh, region. Uh, so with that, um, finally, uh, we have uh, the complete human genome, and we we have the, the sequence, and now it's the question is uh, how we interpreted the the human genome sequence, and as uh, um, uh, we know, um, there is a lot of for with the advanced uh, sequence technology and uh, ability to sequence uh, human uh, whole genome sequences in. Uh, quite uh, cost-effective uh, cost and effective manner. So we have a lot of data about uh, the human genome and different uh, variant, so such as in this sequence. And again, we know about, um, about uh, uh, all the genes that in the genome, the 25,000 genes that we have that mark here in, in, uh, in green. And on top of that, we know that uh, most of the of the genome um, is uh, non-coding sequences, and we know that a lot of gene group elements are exist in uh, those sequences. So some of the uh, sequence that are not uh, uh, coding for sequ uh, not coding for protein are well conserved in the genome, even more than uh, genes sometimes, such as here the uh, in, in purple. And in addition to uh, those uh, sequences, we have we know that it's not only based on the on the sequence on the DNA sequence, but there is another uh, level of uh, regulation that based on uh, how the DNA is uh, um, decorated with uh, by the histone that uh, contain the, the nucleosomes and the different uh, modification on the uh, nucleosome is uh, also important in, uh, in gene regulation. And uh, recently, so we have also these sequences and uh, or this uh, layer that we know where it's uh, decorated. And uh, basically the uh, complexity of our genome is uh, based, also based on the non-coding sequences. And it's not only how it's the DNA is decorated, but it's also how it's organizing organized in the three-dimensional uh, structure. So, uh, basically what we are interested in the lab, uh, we are working on, on different disease and we look on um, different uh, genicultural element and we ask uh, if mutation in these genes can lead to uh, human disease. So, today I will talk about uh, and I'm a Hirsch uh, project, which, which uh, graduate and moved to a postdoc uh, position in uh, Germany. And uh, her project was uh, focused on uh, that uh, structural variant in the, in the genome, such as uh, deletion and duplication, and translocation and inversion. So deletion and duplication, uh, basically, it's an unbalanced uh, structural variant, so or 
there is a deletion of, uh, of um, a sequence or duplication and uh, translocation and inversion are basically balanced uh, so uh, no, no uh, DNA is uh, uh, deleted or missed it's just uh, the location of, uh, of the uh, of the certain uh, loci or locus in the, in the gene so um, and this structural variance um, is um, considered to uh, affect about 25% of rare variants of uh, coding protein sequences. So uh, structural variants uh, uh, have a major role in, um, uh, um, in the function of the genome and uh, uh, how it's work. So um, <clears throat> if uh, we look here, Okay, so um, here there is deletion or structural variants that affect a coding uh, a gene, which can lead to phenotype A. However, we and others show that in this coding region, there also could be uh, junior gold to element. So basically, most of the junior gold to element are located in non-coding sequences that are control the expression of the coding uh, sequences. But there are uh, examples like this. So if there is a structural variance that affect such a gene that is also contain uh, junior glue to element inside of it, so we can get an additional phenotype that is due to disruption of the transcription of a nearby gene that will lead to uh, another phenotype. So basically, this is um, uh, what I'm going to show you. Now I'll go into the details. And I will show you one example where uh, we're talking about two genes, the HDOC9 and TWIST1, and how uh, structural variants in HDOC9 lead to a craniofacial limb phenotype due to disruption of TWIST1 uh, expression. So um, the story starts with a patient that have uh, deletion or uh, uh, translocation so uh, in the HDAC9 uh, locus. So HDAC9 is this gene, a very long gene, and uh, some of each uh, bar here represent a uh, deletion in a patient. So some of the patient have, uh, have cranosinostosis. With, which is a um, premature effusion of the suture, which lead to uh, a craniofacial, a craniofacial uh, phenotype. Um, and some patients have a, a deletion that lead to uh, schizophrenia and other neuro neurogi neurological uh, disorders. And when we look on the deletions, so there we can uh, find that, or we're trying to explain how these uh, deletions and translocation associated with those the two phenotypes. So um, we look on what the function of HDOC9 and HDOC9 uh, and histone deacetylase 9 that express mainly in the uh, mature neurons and uh, in the heart, but it's not expressed uh, in the limb or in the craniofacial during development, and here we, we show on uh, mouse uh, embryo at a uh, specific time point, embryo day 11.5. So this uh, gene can might explain the neurological phenotype, but it cannot explain the uh, craniofacial um, or the craniosynostosis phenotype. So, um, just next to HDOC9, there is another gene, TWIST1, which is a transcription factor. And this gene is um, expressed in the branchial arch and in the fin or limb during development. And this gene uh, can function as an activator or a repressor, depend on the, uh, his protein partner. So, uh, it can uh, bind with another transcription factor to the chromatin and activated gene or with a, a different 
constituent factor, it can repress uh, expression, and uh, mutation in this gene lead to uh, satellite cotton syndrome, which um, is a syndrome that uh, show cranosynostosis. It can be unilateral or uh, bilateral. Okay, so only on one side there is a, a demorphism of the face or both sides. And it's associated with uh, limb malformations such as syndactyly and polydactyly. Um, and all this uh, uh, phenotype is in heterozygous uh, mutation of twist one. And when we look on, on mouse model of uh, uh, twist one uh, homozygous, so they are little, and only the heterozygous show uh, premature of the uh, suture. It could be unilateral or bilateral, recapitulating the phenotype in, the, in human. And uh, what is also interesting is that uh, heterozygous mutation in this uh, uh, gene lead to polydactyly with only partial penetrance. So only 42% of the heterozygous mice showing polydactyly. So um, our hypothesis is that um, as mutation in the twist one protein coding sequence lead to uh, chronosynostosis and limb malformation due to twist one haploid insufficiency, it could be due also due to alteration of twist one transcription regulation. So what we, uh, our hypothesis is that there is a critical twist one regulatory region uh, that overlap with the HDAC coding sequence and um, deletion of this critical region lead to um, um, to this phenotype due to disruption of twist one expression and not HDAC9 uh, protein coding function. So using epigenetic marks uh, such as ataxic, uh, open chromatin and uh, a3 uh, K27 acetylation, chip seek. Uh, we identified uh, several candidate uh, enhancers located in the <coughs> twist one age the locus. So this is all the candidates. And then we perform, perform uh, 4C, uh, looking for chromatin uh, interaction of twist one promoter with different region in this locus. And what you can see here that this uh, region is interact with twist one um, promoter in the limb and the branchial arch, and it's overlap with some uh, enhancer candidates. We also found other regions here over here that also interact with the twist one promoter region, which are not overlap with enhancer candidate, but they are contained CTCF site. So to test, uh, as Alex uh, showed in his uh, uh, presentation, so we use the uh, enhancer assay, individual enhancer assay, where we clone the enhancer candidate in front of a minimal promoter and port gene, and using mouse, transgenic mouse, or transgenic uh, zebrafish, we can check what uh, the sequence where it's drive the reported gene, and uh, we're using uh, zebrafish as a model in addition to uh, uh, mice. So here the, the result. So you see here where twist one is expressed in, in zebrafish and mouse, mainly in the uh, limb, limb bud and the branchial arch at this time point. And this is the enhancer that drove uh, report a gene expression. So what is interesting here is that each of these elements drove the expression in a subtype of the uh, of the limb or or the branchial arch. Okay, so this is specific to the branchial arch. This is this enhances all over the, the limb bud and also in the branchial arch. This one is only in the posterior part and the branchial arch. This is in more in the anterior, this is in the boundary between the limb bud and the body, and here it's also on the posterior. So it's basically like there is different switches that can turn on twist one 
in different sub uh, region of the limb blood, and some of them also in the bronchial arch. And what is interesting also that um, some of them are overlap with the coding sequence of H. Doc 9. So one of them is uh, uh, in answer uh, number six, and what we show is that the exon sequence is required, is necessary, um, but it's a function also uh, not uh, only the exon, but also with some uh, intron uh, sequence. It's recapitulate the, the expression of the uh, uh, chip seq uh, the, the, the sequence that was found by the chip seq uh, peak. So next, to show that uh, actually um, this enhancer regulate twist one and can lead to uh, polydactyly and uh, chromosomostosis, we uh, made a mouse model where we deleted uh, three enhancers. Okay, uh, again, the idea was to delete all three together because there is some redundancy of this enhancer. So to see the phenotype, we wanted to, uh, we deleted all three together. So there are, um, and in, in addition, we deleted, made another model where we deleted the uh, CTCF site. So in both of them, we deleted enhancer or ability element, but also we affected the, in, the sequence of HDAC9, the coding sequence of HDAC9. So um, first, just, just to show you about the chromatin organization. So what you see here, this is the wild type, and here is the subtraction of the interaction frequency and the enhancer deletion and the CTCF deletion. And basically what I want to show you here is that if in the deletion of the enhancer, a definitely reduction of uh, interaction were in the deleted region, but also in the CTCF uh, is uh, less interaction with the promoter region in this model and uh, vice versa with the CTCF. So here, of course, this, is, this deleted is uh, uh, not, not showing any interaction, but it's also affect the enhancer sequence that interact with this one promoter. So basically, to summarize this uh, slide, is that these two elements, this uh, enhancer and CTCF, uh, are, uh, so, so, to some extent, are dependent on each other to generate the chromatin organization and to uh, work. What is the, the phenotype that we found? So as I showed you, it's twist one uh, knockout, the heterozygous show polydactyly with partial penetrance. The enhancer deletion show uh, same phenotype, polydactyly, and also the CTCF. Here is with higher penetrance, and here is more uh, similar to uh, twist one heterozygous. So again, there is some like um, twist one uh, threshold during development that depend if this enhancer or CTCF uh, they can overcome this and generate by the other uh, regulatory element generate enough twist one to cross this threshold and then probably at specific development time point so we don't see the uh, phenotype uh, and there is partial penetrance. Moreover, we see um, partial um, expression. So in some of them, the, uh, the phenotypes they appear only on uh, one, on the left uh, hind limb, or the right hind limb, or both. And uh, we, it's not symmetrical as the stats show. It's more like uh, it's screwed to more to the uh, right, right side. So just to convince you that the deletion here of this enhancer affect twist one expression, so by qPCR and in situ, uh, you can uh, observe that twist one in the wild type is uh, compared to the mutant is reduced. And in this um, uh, model where enhancer were deleted, we not only see uh, polydactyly in, in the hind limb, but also in the fore limb, and this is a different story, I'm not going into that, but we found that uh, a mis-expression of very interesting gene that uh, uh, differentiate between hind limb and fore limb, 
uh, but this is a different story. I want to focus on on this one, um, and this is for the CTCF. So again, here we can see that there is a reduction of uh, twist one uh, expression in the in the limb, and this effect also we found that uh, its effect a uh, downstream targets such as HEN2, GLEE3, and ALX4 that known to be belong to the sonic hedgehog uh, pathway that cause at the end to a uh, polydactyl. So reduction of twist one lead to um, a misexpression or diffuse of the expression of HEN2 into the, from the posterior into the, more to the anterior and vice versa with uh, the lead 3 and ALX4 and uh, this is what probably lead to the polydactyl. So I'm going back here, so we have uh, these two models that show uh, limb phenotype, however this uh, two deletion affect the regulatory element of twist 1 but also the coding sequence of HDAC9. So to show that it's not related to HDAC9 uh, coding uh, sequence, we generated a third model where we inverted the entire gene. Okay. So we um, basically we, we didn't affect the um, uh, coding sequence of HDAC9, but we relocated uh, twist one regul to element, and we got uh, so the homozygous is little, such as the um, twist one uh, homozygous and the the heterozygous show polydactyly with uh, very low uh, penetrance. So I'm going back to the patient and uh, I show you only on what happened on uh, on limb development, but actually the phenotype, the major phenotype, is the cranosynostosis. So uh, we went back and identified another. Um, enhancers that function in the branchial arch, okay, such as these two, and um, we uh, Matan, another student in the lab, that he um, characterized their expression not do only uh, during uh, early development of uh, zebrafish, but later on when they are adult, and um, what you can see here that the expression of uh, the different enhancer is in the branchial arch and one particularly interested uh, enhancer is enhancer 5 which uh, shown to uh, be expressed specifically in the suture in zebrafish what you see here in the uh, Believe me, that uh, so uh, it's during uh, uh, early development. It's expressed here in two dots, in addition to the fin or limb, and then in uh, in adult, it's expressed in the suture. So this is a suture-specific enhancer that can be connected to the uh, model um, or the the phenotype that we see in a uh, patient. And um, we went back to the uh, mouse model that we had, and uh, by collaborating, co collaborating with uh, Benedict Lab from the uh, University of Calgary, which is an uh, expert in uh, morphometrics, meaning to take uh, skulls, and by um, uh, taking measurement of uh, 68 points, different points on the skull, it can uh, measure the distance between those point, point and um, measure the, the the size and the shape of the of the skull, and what you can uh, see here that uh, the wild type, the, the centric size or the, the skull size of uh, the different mutant is smaller than the wild type, and also the the shape is different from uh, all the uh, mouse model to the the wild type. So just to convince you. Uh, how it look like, so we also do some uh, staining. Okay, 
So now you can see, so this is uh, just uh, a movie that shows the difference between the wild type and the mutant of the enhancer, of the enhancer deletion. And what you can see here that the, the, the skull is uh, smaller and uh, the shape is, uh, is different. And also by staining, what you can see here, you can see that it's asymmetric. Of the of the skull and it's also a smaller so this is more like unilateral chronosynostosis like this and this is more like bilateral so um, and this is for the enhancer but we have a similar uh, results for the deletion of the CT sleeve so um, basically to uh, summarize we have uh, a mutation of uh, the enhancer and the CTCF, and both of them show a smaller um, skull uh, size and different in, in shape. And um, so we define a critical region of uh, twist one uh, regulatory, element, a regulatory, regulatory region that uh, reside in HDAC9 sequence, and we identify different enhancers in this uh, region and by uh, deleting the in, in several enhancer or the CTCF we show that it's leading to a chronosynostosis like phenotype and polydactyl in both of them and also when we uh, inverted HDAC9 and affected only the uh, location of the enhancer we get a similar phenotype so this is for age um, that nine and twist one. We have other examples of uh, of such that we are working on, such as in DLX uh, uh, five and six locus, with also with chromosomostosis. We have uh, uh, to show that uh, um, deletion or a structure variant that affect um, the coding sequence of one gene. Uh, also um, contain enhancer that uh, regulate the uh, nearby gene. So um, the take home uh, message is that structural uh, uh, variant could lead to a phenotype that is not attributed to its uh, protein function, uh, but rather to disruption of the transcription regulation of the uh, nearby gene. So I'm not saying that all of the Structural variants are affected uh, both protein coding sequence and uh, uh, regulatory element, but this is something that uh, we need to consider when we are looking on uh, mutation in, in genes, and we need to check also if they could anyhow uh, affect the transcription regulation of other genes. And with that, I would like to thank, especially to Naama, who did uh, most of this work, and uh, LAM, LAM members, and uh, all our collaborators. Thank you very much. OK, questions. Yes, they need. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I understood your uh, inversion. Do you have an inversion breakpoint between HDAC9 and TWIST? Yes. And what is the other breakpoint? At the end of uh, of eight seconds. But then, how can you discard the possibility that it might be a mutation within the HDAC9? We have uh, uh, the the breakpoint right here, and then it's inverted. How can, you make, how can you be sure that you don't affect HDAC9 by, by the inversion? Ah, yeah, we checked by Western that it's not affected. The expression is not affected. I'm not showing it here, but yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. We show that the HDAC9 is not affected in the oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I have a similar question to the deletion of the twist 5 enhances, which overlaps this exome, right? Yes. How do you there control for HDAC9? Because if you delete that enhance, you would delete an exon. Of yeah, 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 exactly. We deleted the exon and the reboot to have its speeds because it's a, it's a DNA yeah. sequence that they have a dual function. Yeah. And so HDAC9 or that particular exon of HDAC9 is not required 
in your system or in that particular tissue? So in this particular tissue, exactly, this particular tissue in, uh, in craniofacial development and limb, uh, in limb, but yeah, I think that HDAC9 is not required. Okay. This is the hypothesis. In the case where you do the inversion, and yeah. this is sort of following from the previous question, um, you basically still have both of the CTCF side and the twist 567 elements there. So are you basically saying that you've changed the tag organization so you flip the enhancer so it no longer communicates with the twist? I know, I'm not that, saying the tag the organization. Yeah, the, the inside tag organization. Yeah, so is there any way to check that? Oh yeah, there is a way. We didn't check it, but uh, yeah, but you can do 4C on the yeah. on this uh, mouse model, but because it's like heterozygous, we didn't get the homozygous, so yeah, we we didn't do that. Yeah. yeah. But it's a good idea. Yeah, we definitely agree to to try and to see if we even we have the Y type allele and the inversion, if we can see that reorganization of the chromatin. Organ. Of the chromatin in these slopes, yeah, definitely. So, do I understand correctly that you think that these perturbations uh, increase the level of twist power to the level of heterozygosity? And this is something that is to be used, right? Yes, yeah, so we deleted the enhancers, but we already we know that there are other enhancers, even probably the promoter can do some. Uh, control the, the expression of uh, twist one without the enhancer. So <coughs> there is a threshold. So the, the so there is a there is a so you are affecting the level of the twist gene product. Exactly. I'm, I'm trying to gauge what is the magnitude of the effect. Are you at the level of heterozygosity or or over further or so further? even so again um, even in, so in our model, it's uh, of the enhancers and the CTZF, it's a uh, homozygous for this deletion. I understand, but what does this mean? What does this do to level of expression of twist? You are, you, you are trying to, you are thinking about if, the... If I measure the expression... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. This is uh, the, the assumption that it's a fact. So it's some uh, threshold, but yeah. We, we, didn't, we, we didn't show that or, or have, have it, any evidence that there is a what if, if there is any threshold and what is the threshold that you switch between you have a phenotype or not? Questions? Yes. So some funny question. So can you envision like this axon which is an enhancer? How does it work like? Both for tra transcription and for an enhancer at the same time. So I mean, this molecular. is not unique to this uh, system or this example. So many, many enhancers are located in the intron, even of the same gene that they are uh, regular. Intron, fine, but exon. Yeah, but for the transcription, basically it doesn't matter because both of them, uh, exon and intron, need to be transcribed. So. Yeah, it's very dynamic, and we know that uh, the, the enhancer will uh, activate RNA pole 2, and then it's dissociated and, uh, and need to be transcribed, even if it's exon of another gene or intron of the same gene or, uh, or another gene. What we try to, to do here, because exactly because of this uh, issue, is to separate but to take example of where the protein or the exon is uh, coated in one tissue and the enhancer function in another tissue. But there is other example even of exons that autoregulate, not only intron, the exons that autoregulate the same gene. So it's something very dynamic. Did they answer your question? Yeah, so I was sort of thinking whether there cannot be any clash between like, these two molecular mechanism. So it's interesting. There it is. You don't understand how it's exactly works. <laughs> there it is. Does, yeah, how can I, they live together? Just to follow that question up, does anyone know if there's a distinction in the bursting characteristics of a gene which is regulated by an intronic enhancer versus one that's outside the coding region? Because that's the sort of dynamic behavior that one might imagine 
was disrupted by the competition between transcription and yeah. regulation? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, that's an open question. Great question. Yeah, we don't have the answer. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then we have lunch break and we convene at the quarter to three.